had a good night's rest. We were able to get to this trail and worship the Lord this morning. So, um, we'll get to the announcements here. Um, first off, this is a sign of us getting back to normal. We got sign up sheets. Ellie, you want to pass this one around? This is for prayer. And Landon, pass this around. That's for special music for singers. So as one goes back and makes the loop, they should pass each other sooner or later. And uh, we'll get that done. So consider where and how you can serve the Lord. Okay? Let's get to the announcements. Um, Tuesday, we have food handout Tuesday, and we're going to Flint tomorrow to pick up food. We should be back uh, around quarter to 11, 11 o'clock in that time frame. Uh, so if you're available to help unload and uh, put things away, that would be great. We have a large load. Yeah, Chris has been busy shopping. <laughs> I always said she should have been a purchasing agent for a large corporation. <laughs> uh, Judy brought this in. In Samaritan's Purse, in their uh, PowerPoint booklet, she says it has a nice story about Midland and the Shoebox Ministries. So if you have access to that, and I would imagine you can probably find that online too. It's probably on their web page. Uh, so Samaritan's Purse. A nice story about uh, that ministry that's done across the country and around the world. So, uh, ladies' Bible study at the church, 10 o'clock on Tuesday. Um, Zoom fellowship, 7 p.m. Uh, Wednesday's the Bible study. And let's see, any other announcements that we need to make that aren't on here? There is none. I don't see any visitors today, so let's go to birthdays. No birthdays last week. No birthdays. Any anniversaries? No anniversaries. That's been a slow time nine months ago. <laughs> All right. In that case, let's uh, go to our invocation. And this morning we return to Psalms chapter 119 and verses 41 through 48. Which happens to be the sixth um, Hebrew letter of Baal. And it is a silent letter, so you don't find a whole lot of words in the Bible that start with that letter. Uh, but there is one in the book of Esther. Remember Queen Vashti? That starts with that letter, Baal. Of course, Queen Vashti was queen uh, to Xerxes, and she uh, ignored his request, and he banished her. So, let's read from Psalms 119, verse 41. It says, May your unfailing love come to me, Lord, your salvation according to your promise. <clears throat> then I can answer anyone who taunts me, for I trust in your word. Never take your word of truth from my mouth, for I have put my hope in your laws. I will always obey your law forever and ever. I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. I will speak of your statutes before kings and will not be put to shame. For I delight in your commands because I love them. I reach out for your commands, which I love that I may meditate on your decrees. And that's the reading of Psalms 119. Shall we rise and pray? And that we will come and lead us in Psalm. Father, we come before you today thanking you for your unfailing love, grace, and mercy, for your gift of salvation, freedom, and liberty. You led us to your Son, Jesus Christ, and through him we have come to recognize these gifts and more. Father, you have given us the truth through your word and courageous strength to speak it and to defend it without shame. Father, today the world needs your truth spoken more than ever. May the light of the truth shine brighter and clearer through us every day. 
May you bless our worship today by relighting our candle of truth that we may carry forward in your name. These things we ask according to your will and in the name of your risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So the pastor came to me this morning and he says, I'd like to exchange places with you today. I said, you want me to preach? <laughs> he, changed, he reassigned my seat. He didn't like it over here. So he got my seat reassigned over here. So we'll see if he hits me over here. Love lifted me. And how many times did Christ's love lift us? He does it daily. <laughs>
to say the pledges. Yes. I guess I'm in a hurry this morning. Let's uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the British flag and to the Savior for which it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. Okay, may be seated. He's more than the master of the sea. He's Adam Olam, master of the universe. That's who our God, our creator, is. So it's time for uh, worship, the tithes and offerings. Uh, so let's see. Lisa, you want to pray for the offerings? I have a question, Dad. We just thank you for it, uh, the reason to be here for today and for letting us all be here. And we ask that you please bless the dressing, the blessings on the tithes and offerings and put them to your use. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 <laughs> it's time for our praises and concerns. And as we have communion today, as Pastor mentioned earlier, um, give your... Uh, Request short, keep them brief, because we don't want to run out of time. Janet? You know, God does protect his children. Amen. He protects his children. We had a terrible storm this past week, and I've lived in the same house for 40 some years, and lightning's never struck close by. It struck in the woods in back of me, and the woods in front of me, but it's never so close as it did. It's stuck in my backyard. The telephone pole was out. We had to have Chapin come out and get us going. The internet was off. Some of the things were off in the house. And my dog, who was afraid of anything, took such a streak in the air. It was so funny to see her jump. And I jumped too. But uh, my son, who, looked, who works at the oven, heard it. See over there. That's how loud the bang was. And he called home to see if we lost power, which we did, they got. But you know, the Lord protects in my house. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Because it was so close, the house could have caught on fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And God protected me that day. Mm -hmm. I stayed in the bathroom for about 15 minutes with the doors all shut before I ventured out into the living room. But uh, God protects his children in every circumstance. Amen. Yeah, he's got to protect the angels. So. Nancy? Um, I would say that same day of that storm, my husband's car died. So it had to be flatbed at home to the, the service station. Of course, they are so backed up because of no business have enough workers. So Friday we out and out and secured in a vehicle. So. <laughs> Not what we intended to do, but so I praise God for that. Yeah. Crystal? Just keep saying Henry in your prayers because he's been waiting for the hospital to call. They're trying to, there just hasn't been an opening for surgery. And he needs to get in there for his surgery. So pray that things open up. Lisa? Yesterday was 22 months since I quit smoking. <laughs> In the next October, I appreciate that anniversary. Amanda? <laughs> uh, yeah, just an update on my mom. Um, the doctor's called uh, crazy, and she sees a heart surgeon that, the, that she has to see to get the Tavar procedure. That will be um, next Wednesday, but she can't see 
the guy who's going to do the TAVAR procedure until November 17th. So we're really pushing this out. I'm guessing Christmas time we'll be doing this. It's been a long road, but and she's very nervous. She's afraid she's going to have open heart surgery. So pray for her that her nerves go away. Yeah. Um, there is power in prayer. I was reminded about that this morning. That's why I wore this tie. We need to be praying for our president oh, and all of his cabinet yes. and all the leaders in Washington as this uh, COVID-19 is uh, making its presence felt there. So uh, definitely pray for our leadership and our country at this time. Nancy? I'm unspoken too. Okay, unspoken, all over. Um, I just have a praise. Um, with all this COVID stuff going on, you know, all the SATs, all that stuff got canceled last year, so colleges are opening up um, based on grades, uh, GPAs, and that. Uh, Riley applied to SVSU, which is where he wants to go. He was accepted. All right. um, now he's doing the SAT. Everything's kind of backwards. SAT <laughs> is going to be this month, and so now he's applying for scholarships. And so I'm just praise he uh, knows what he wants to do. Uh, after football season's over with, he is going to go take the certification to be able to do mortgages because apparently there's no age. And he's going to start working with a uh, financial planner in, in Owasso after that. Yeah. So, praise the Lord there. Jim. Um, this thankful hospice is coming in. I'd like to thank everybody for all the help. I've been trying to put in a bathroom and it's helping really. Bringing food in has really helped a lot. So I haven't had to get up and cook stuff for her and everything, but they figured out that she may have had a light stroke. She was real weak on the right side, she's having speech problems. And we're talking about bringing the speech specialists in to help her. So just thankful for her. Okay. And praise for Harriet and Jim at this time. Anybody else? Jim. I know it's uh, just uh, praise God for the enjoyable, relaxing time I had. Last week, walking around the battlefields with my niece and nephew. Okay. Some bonding time there. <laughs> Sharon? I'm having surgery Thursday morning, and I'd like to have some little prayer, too. Okay. Yeah. What time? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Okay. So Thursday morning, huh? Okay. So Thursday morning, with Sharon up to the Lord. Okay. Uh, there is nothing else. We will have Kathleen come and lead us in chorus, and Pastor will pray. Let's stand and uh, prepare our hearts for prayer this morning. And as we sing this chorus, something beautiful, something good, you know, he understands. He understands. Father, 
we have the comfort of the hope of the gospel. And may that be foremost in our minds. Father, uh, you see the, the sick and afflicted. I pray you'd be with Judy Dearman. pray that you'd be with uh, old, uh, uh, Sharon as she goes in this week. Father, we pray that you would uh, just work in the various ones, Father, the ones that were mentioned, the ones that are on the prayer list. Uh, Father, we, we do ask that you would, we just kind of bring them in a bundle and ask that you would be with them. Father, be with our world. Father, it's been another week. Father, we've got reports of horrible atrocities being uh, committed against our Christian brothers and sisters in many lands. Father, please, first of all, we pray for them. And we ask that you would give them a heart full of love. May they be filled with the Spirit. Father, may they be uh, such that their love and their uh, the strength of their spirit would cause their persecutors uh, to understand the error of their ways. And Father, change and become your servants and our brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, then we pray for our nation. Lord, you see the elements that are trying to destroy the nation. They openly say that. Father, you created this nation. And as we come before you, we're asking that you would, would uh, protect and carry on your, your nation. Father, help us to come back to you. And help us to return to becoming an intentional nation under God. Father, we pray that you'd be with our president, the first lady, Father, various people in the government. It seems like this COVID-19 is making a sweep through there. We're asking that they have a speedy and complete recovery. We ask that it would be such that, their, that the way it's handled would bring hope and unity to our nation. Father, then to uh, be with our governor, be with our uh, legislators, be with our judges, uh, our civil servants. Lord, please, be, we pray especially for our, our police and, and law enforcement officials. Father, they have an important job and people who are lawless hate them. We're asking that you would protect them and that you would help them to be able to do their job and keep order in our land. Father, we pray that you would be with our local area. Uh, Father, be with our local leaders. Uh, we pray that you would give them the wisdom of the one that's greater than Solomon. And, and would, you, would you help them to uh, be some of the, the best, the, to be good people and some of the best among us. Be with our congregation. Father, thank you for the way that uh, you've been with us. We thank you for the way that you've helped us over this uh, summer of, uh, of uh, challenge. Father, as we come before you now, we do ask that you would bless us, that you would help us. Father, protect us. Um, give us wisdom, Father, so that everything we do is done by wisdom and that you would uh, help us to uh, do and be what you'd have us to be. Bless the service, may everything that's said, everything that's done, everything that's sung, may it be to your name's honor and glory, for we've asked it in Jesus' name, amen. These week of power is 14 verses uh, 9 through 12, which says, For fools mock at making amends for sin. But good will is found among the upright. Each heart knows its own bitterness, and no one else can share joy. The house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the upright will flourish. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Verse 11 there, it says, The house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the upright will flourish or be protected. Chris and I were talking, uh, I believe it was yesterday, about the exodus and the plagues in Egypt. 
all those plagues, the Hebrews were not touched by any of God's protection. So, okay. So next we have Just for Kids. Pastor will be doing that. And then we'll have special music by Walter and Kathleen. And then Pastor will bring the word that the Lord has laid upon his heart. Morning, boys and girls. It's, uh, it's been a busy week and uh, not without its frustrations. Did anybody else have a week like that? Yeah. Well, boys and girls, those weeks come. But did you know we can always be thankful? We can be thankful for one thing, if nothing else, and that's for uh, being saved. Now, I just thought this morning it would be a good time to say, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for saving. friends, 
But we must respect them. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Well, God loves you. Jesus loves you. The church loves you. And so do I.
It's in that front pocket there. Oh, yeah, just, just bring me my Bible. I, uh, I never did get us up streaming this morning. I tried to do some things this week. I downloaded a piece of software that was supposed to help us. I couldn't get it running. What I didn't know was that it um, hijacked my YouTube, thank you, John, and I can't get it up. So, uh, we're just we're going, fortunately, we, we do a backup for a reason. We do a backup for a reason. Okay. We're in the middle of a series called, I was young, and now I'm old. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't know what happens at your house, but at my house, I am getting all kinds of uh, uh, jabs about how old and how fat I am. <laughs> and my kids and my grandkids are all saying, you know, Grandpa is getting old. Well, I don't think I'm old. Am I old? Well, I'm over 70. I guess I am. But, yeah. But I don't know. I don't, know, I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm just getting started. Is that right? Yeah, there you go. But the truth of the matter is, I was young and now I am old, and I'm not nearly as fast as I used to be. Um, I, I fall asleep in the afternoon. Um, I, uh, uh, I uh, you know, I, as I as I got, got older. Uh, hair quit growing on my head, started growing out my ears and my nose. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it just, uh, it, it. But I'm doing, I'm doing this series for the reason that as I have gotten older, I have seen some things that I simply couldn't see when I was younger. Some things you just have to be there to do it. And one of the things that I have seen and um, to a certain extent experienced is the fear of death. Now, one of the things that this COVID pandemic has done, it has brought to the forefront humanity's fear of death. I mean, it... It literally covers everything we do. Uh, there are people who absolutely refuse to leave their home. Uh, they, uh, if someone didn't bring them groceries, they had them delivered, they were there. They were so afraid of getting COVID. Uh, there are people who were so afraid of getting COVID that even though they have cancer, and they need their chemo, chemo, uh, chemo treatments, they're so afraid of getting COVID that they refuse to go and be treated for their cancer. Well, now, what good is that going to do? You know, well, you know, uh, that's where we are. Here's the thing uh, that, 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 uh, that uh, bothered me about this. Statistics demonstrate that unless you are older and have certain underlying conditions, the probability of dying of COVID, if you get it, is less than 1%. Okay? But everybody is, I'm going to die! And why would we do that? Why are we so afraid of it? Now, on a little lighter side, it's been said that in Victorian days, death was openly discussed and a part of life, while sex was unspoken and unmentioned. However, in the 21st century America, sex is discussed openly and it's a part of life, while death is unspoken and unmentioned. Wow. The... Uh, that's 
talk about, don't we? It actually brings us to our, to our text, which says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too, meaning Christ, shared their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery, what? By their fear of death. Okay. Let, let's talk about this for just a little bit, okay? When we start talking about the fear of death, <laughs> the first thing we need to do is to make a distinction between death, the fear of death, and the fear of dying. Now, most of us would choose a quick and painless death over a, uh, a long and uh, one where we suffer and die over an extended period, period of time. But the truth of the matter is, most of us are going to die that way. We go over an extended period of time, uh, there's going to be pain, there's going to be inconvenience. Uh, my, my mother, my 92-year-old mother, likes to tell me, growing old is not for sissies. <laughs> And it's not. You know, I'm finding that out. Um, uh, Ken Davis says that after you turn 50, when you wake up in the morning, something somewhere hurts. <laughs> and we laugh, but we all know it's all too true. Okay? And, and so what, we're, what, what we start talking about the fear of dying, what we... What we fear is, first of all, we fear the pain of it. Um, I've been a pastor for near for 30 years, and I've been with a number of people uh, at, in their dying. And I will have to tell you that death is often a painful process. And we fear that. Um, oh, uh, we fear the loss of dignity that's associated with declining health and mental acuity. I don't know about you, but there is Alzheimer's in my family. And I fear that at some point, I'm going to experience dementia and everything that goes with us. And as a man who has spent a lot of time speaking with people and whatever, to find myself in a nursing home uh, slobbering all over myself, uh, I fear that. Okay? It's, it, it happens. I don't know what God's will for my life is. I've asked God to allow me to be keep my uh, wits about me until I die. But He knows better than I do. And He may grant that request and He may not. I simply have to open my, hand, my, uh, my, my hand. But I certainly would prefer to die with dignity as opposed to the way I've uh, seen uh, other people die. We fear that, and we ought to. In fact, when you start talking about the pain of dying, and you go back to the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed to be free, not that he was afraid of the coming death, he wanted to be free from the suffering that he was going to go through. Okay? There's a little bit of common sense there. And so there is, we do need to make a distinction between the fear of death and the fear of dying. Now, having said that, uh, look, about the fear of death, uh, one of the things I, I've spent most of this week asking the Lord, why do we fear death? What, what's going on here? And uh, part of the problem I have, I know, that number one, I was raised in a Christian home that when we went to funerals, there was just the assumption that the good people had gone to heaven and they were in a better place. Uh, as a Christian growing up in that, there was an expectation of life after death and that it was better over there than it is here. And, and so when it start, we start talking about fear of death, I know just because of my culture, it's been blunted. And uh, it makes difficult. So, uh, what I did, I decided to uh, take a look at uh, Greek mythology. I want to look at Greek mythology and try and understand how the unenlightened 
and the unregenerate handled death. And so I, uh, uh, I began uh, looking at uh, Hades and uh, uh, Thanatos. Now, uh, uh, Hades, of course, is the god of the underworld, the god of the dead. Uh, Thanatos, on the other hand, is death itself. Thanatos was the one who would come and when the fate said your time's up, Thanatos was the one who took you to the underworld. And what, what I learned about them is that death, the fear of death, is actually reflected in the character of these two gods. First of all, it's dark. Uh, we, in the underworld, and, uh, down there, and it's dark. It's stern. There's nothing, you, you're stuck with it, and it's there. You do what it says, and if there's any deviation from it, there's penalties, and it's cruel. And death, in many respects, is cruel. And first, and then it's hard, just plain. It's like, it's like falling on, face down on a concrete floor. It's hard and it hurts. It's unyielding. You can't do anything about it. You're there and it doesn't move. Um, it's merciless. When you begin talking about uh, death, you know, and where we are, there's, there's lots of things about mercy and whatever, but not with death. There's no mercy in death. It's indiscriminate. It happens to everybody. It doesn't make any difference whether you're good, bad, uh, red, yellow, black, or white, rich, poor, male, female. Everybody comes in. It just doesn't make any difference at all. And finally, there is the idea that after you cross the river Styx, you were taken to judgment. <laughs> And with judgment, there was always the possibility that you would be sent to Tartarus, which is the prison that holds evil people and the wicked. And you're there and you're tormented forever. Okay? Now, from looking at that, I'd say that's something to fear. Isn't it? It, it really is. Let me read you something here. It's Voltaire's in. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Voltaire, but he was a famous, famous atheist. He was a well-educated French philosopher, had wide influence, many honors. He was rich. But he was an atheist, and we read this. The noted French atheist, Voltaire, died a frightening death. Let me quote for you the exact record as published. When Voltaire felt the stroke that he realized must terminate in death, he was overpowered with remorse. He at once sent for the priest and wanted to be reconciled with the church. His infidel flatterers hastened to his chamber to prevent his recantation, but it was only to witness his ignominy and their own. He cursed them to their faces, and as his distress was increased by their presence, he repeatedly and loudly exclaimed, Be gone! It is you that have brought me to my present condition. Leave me, I say, be gone! What a wretched glory is this which you have produced in me. Hoping to allay his anguish by a written recantation, he had it prepared, signed it, and saw it witnessed, but it was all unavailing. For two months he was tortured with such agony as led him at times to gnash his teeth in impotent rage against God and man. At other times, in plaintive accents, he pleaded, O Christ, O Lord Jesus. Then, turning his face, he would cry out, I must die abandoned by God and men. As the end drew near, his condition became so frightful that his infidel associates were afraid to approach his bedside. Still, they guarded the door that others might not know how awfully an infidel is compelled to die. 
Even his nurse repeatedly said, for all the wealth of Europe, I would never see another infidel die. It was a scene of horror that lies beyond all exaggeration. Such is the well-attested end of one who had a natural sovereignty of intellect, excellent education, great wealth, and much earthly honor. Death has something about it that needs to be feared. Now, in the Bible, death is both an enemy and a friend. Okay? Okay. First of all, death can bring permanent separation from God. And we must understand that often in Scripture, where death is the enemy, we go back to the garden where God said, the day you eat of this tree, you'll surely die. And what happened when they ate of the tree? They were permanently separated from God. They were driven from the garden. An angel guarded it. They could not be with God. The ground was cursed. Childbirth was cursed. Everything was cursed. They were separated from God. And that is called death. Now you have to understand, you've got to think about this just a little bit. In that same garden was the tree of, the, of, of life. And, had, and God said, well, we've got to get them out of here because they're allowed to eat that tree and live forever. So God's intention was for people to be forever in his presence. But when they sinned, they died in that they were taken completely from God's presence. So, it means permanent separation from God. Very famous scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 25, and 26. For he, Christ, must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Now, we got to make clear here that with, the, uh, with his death and resurrection, he defeated death. But death is not subject to him at this point. He's still going around doing his thing. Okay? So, but the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Um, not only can it bring permanent separation from God, on the other hand, death is the gateway to heaven. I didn't think about that. Uh, you know, Craig has the song he sings, Threaten Me With Heaven. You know? It's the, it's the gateway to heaven. And here's what Paul said to the Philippians. Uh, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I, were to, if I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose? I do not know. I'm, between, I'm torn between two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. <clears throat> and so notice here, death is the key to heaven. So when we start talking about death in the Bible, it is both an enemy and a friend. What do we fear about death? First of all, is the fear of the unknown. Uh, the uh, one of the things that we have I, I don't know I mess around a lot on YouTube and you can find some really uh, uh, interesting things let's just say that but one of the things there are literally tons of are people with their near death experiences and uh, uh, it's interesting. It's interesting to read them. You, know, you, get, you get these titles. I died for thirty minutes and spent in hell. I died for three days and was with Jesus. You know, I mean, you, you, you got it going. And it, it, they're they're cute to read and they're interesting. And frankly, the people who ever have it are forever changed if you if they have a near death experience. Uh, and so for us, there is at least. Some idea of the unknown. You know, there's going through the dark tunnel. You swap the light at the end. 
Uh, when you go to the light, you feel perfect love and perfect knowledge and all things like that, unless you're, uh, on the other hand, the light sends you to hell, and at that point, it's utter darkness and uh, suffering and, and whatever. They're all pretty much the same. It's interesting how similar they are. Uh, and so that gives us at least some idea of what's going on. But I can tell you something. I've never died. And if you think about it, those near-death experiences, they didn't die either. They didn't die. <laughs> and so uh, the idea of death and never having died, it's unknown to me. Um, and so uh, there's a, a certain trepidation with uh, what's, you know, with the unknown. Um, we fear how those left behind will function. As I uh, have worked with people, the latter part, parts of death, one of the things that I have noted among those who are lucid and feel that they have family members dependent on them is what's going to happen to them. Who's going to take care of mom? Who's going to take care of my wife? Are they going to be able to handle the bills and whatever? And that, we read, we've got some promises. In Psalm 146 and 9, it says, The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow. And I remind people of that, that should, should they go away, God is going to step in and take care of them. I'm looking in a congregation where there are a number of widows among us, and they can say amen to that. When their, when their uh, spouse passed, they weren't sure what they were going to do. But as time has gone on, God's been with them, brought people into their lives to teach them, and frankly, they've come to the point that they thrive. But it's God. And God is the one who made promises. And so when we fear, we also need to realize and talk to the Lord about uh, He's going to take care of those that are dependent upon us. Um, finally, there is a, a fear of annihilation. Now, annihilation means... And it's prevalent in our world. One of the reasons why we see a rise in suicides, one of the reasons why uh, we see people that are atheistic and whatever, is they believe that you live and you die. You were dirt and you become dirt and that's all there is. I don't know about you, but I hope not. I've worked hard all my life. And we talked in an earlier message about leaving a legacy. And I hope, I hope that I will be able to leave a legacy, something that lasts beyond me. Uh, I hope that I last longer than my funeral. But I can tell you, I believe it's the Jehovah Witnesses. I may be wrong there. Uh, but there are some that say, nope, you die, that's all over. It's just annihilation. That's it. Well, that could be fearful. That could be fearful. Now, but the biggie is this. Fear of judgment. We are honest. We agree with Paul in the book of Romans who says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All right? Now, uh, people say, well, uh, okay, I did some bad things, but if I do some good things, then uh, it'll make up for it. No. The problem with that is, is the good things that you do and are trying to uh, get a little bit of extra on it, you should have done those in the first place. It's, it's only goodness for that time. There's no way to pay for the sin that was done. And, and even though it may seem small by some standards, we sin against God. And the truth of the matter is, most of us have committed some pretty serious sins 
and a number of them. And when we do that, we know that if we were to face Jesus, we would find ourselves headed for a sinner's hell. Yeah. I'm telling you something. That is something to fear. It really is. Because the Bible throughout teaches that sin is always punished. Now, here's the good news. Paul, or the Hebrew writer, puts it this way. As it appointed men for men to die once, after that, the judgment. Those of you who will or have had me around and we talk in some private conversation, I have said about certain people, you know something? I wouldn't be want to be in their shoes and how when they stand eyeball to eyeball with Jesus, they've got some splaining to do. Right? Come on. Come on. The truth of the matter is, all of us have some splaining to do. Amen. Amen. Right? Ah, okay. But, <coughs> our text makes it clear that Christ defeated death so that we have nothing to fear. You see, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we come into possession of eternal life right then. Amen. We're not going to be separated from God. The sins that we committed, we admit, but Jesus paid the price that we couldn't pay. He paid that price so that it would be right and just for God to forgive us. And so when we begin to do that, all of a sudden we begin to realize that we don't have to fear death. Furthermore, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, He promises in John 14 that He's gone away to prepare a place for us so that He's going to come back and He's going to take us with Him and we're going to spend eternity with Him and His very presence. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know about you, but I'm like Paul. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Amen? 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 Come on. When we start talking about these things and begin to realize that we go into the immediate presence of Christ. Furthermore, when, as, we, as we know about life after death, we also are aware that we are going to come in and, and we are going to rejoin those friends and loved ones that we've left behind. I'm going to tell you something. I am looking forward to heaven. One of the people I want to talk to is my Grandma Miller. Now, my Grandma Miller was the one that told me, John, you're going to be a preacher. Okay? She knew it. Grandma died and never once ever heard me preach. But I want to get up and I want to ask her, say, Grandma, were you able to hear anything? What'd you think when I committed to preach? What'd you think about my, my pastors? Did I do okay, Grandma? Did I do what we, what we wanted to do? I want to talk to Grandma. I want to talk to my dad. My dad was my dad had the gift of hospitality. It was very much unlike me. My dad knew how to play and have fun. I took after my mother, who was a workaholic. 
But I want to see Dad. I want to talk to him. I want to laugh with him again. I'm looking forward to it. You afraid of it? No! No! It's, see, unlike the, 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 uh, the heathens who believe that death goes to the underworld and it's dark and it's hard and it's stern and it's all. I'm going to a place where it's light. Amen. Amen. And peace. Amen. No sin. Amen. No politics. And so, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have no reason to fear death. Because what lays ahead of us, as Paul said, for me to die is gain. It's better. It's better by far. To live for Christ. If we live a life of love and a life of service, we have no reason to fear the judgment because we have Christ in our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I had a poem that I was going to read. It is not death to die, but it's back in my uh, briefcase, and we're going to leave it there. Okay? All right. Let's go ahead and have one. Father, you have blessed us. Oh, Jesus, thank you for conquering death. Thank you for showing us not only that there was life beyond the grave, but there, was, there is life that is not, is not dark. It's hopeful and we're in your presence, and we're there forever. Thank you. Thank you so much. Father, we pray that you would help us to think on these things and to not fear death. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <coughs> Can I have the ushers, please? On the night he was crucified, facing death, Jesus took the cup, or took the bread, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. And in doing that, he said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Today, we want to remember that he broke death for us. We don't have to fear because he, his body was broken to break fear. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, remembering the broken bread and the broken body of our Lord and Savior, and the blessing we ask is that you would be with us and in us break the fear of death. Jesus. Likewise, he took the cup and he gave it uh, and, and he blessed it. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant uh, in my name. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Notice that covenant is about relationship. This is the eternal covenant. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to abandon us. He is going to be with us us and so we so that we may never experience death as being abandoned by God. Amen.
Father, thank you for the covenant that you've made with us. This morning, we renew that and tell you we're thankful for it. And Father, we want to renew it with you. And Father, always be in relation with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Pass him out early so that you got time to <laughs> He took the bread and he broke it and said, This is my body for you. He took the cup and he said, This is the blood of the new covenant in my name. As often as you take it, do it in remembrance of me. Father, this sister is dear to all of us. 
She has served us and served us well. We're coming before her. She's facing unknown uh, here on Thursday. We're asking that you would touch her body. Father, we're praying that you would prepare. It seems you want to use doctors and nurses in this. So we're asking, first of all, that you would prepare them. And Father, may, they, may the knowledge that they have uh, be uh, undergirded by the Spirit and give them insight beyond their knowledge. We pray that you would give them skills beyond their ability. Holy Spirit, we ask that the gifts of healing would fill that room and that there would be glory to you because of the way you've worked the healing of our sisters. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you again for the opportunity to come to you in prayer, Lord, and you're so gracious and loving. Thank you for the words that the pastor brought today about the fear of dying and the glorious moment of dying. Dying means that we no longer live here but live with you. Yes. yes. The fear of death, so many have that, Lord, and I just lift them up to you that they would find some way to find you to distinguish that fear, Lord. Yeah. With you in our lives and in our hearts, we have no reason to fear. Uh -huh. yes. Satan is squashed, Lord, and we thank you for that. Yes. We thank you for the salvation that you've given us. Yes. We thank you for your leadership and your blessings yes. and the way that you've changed our lives, Lord, you, Lord. Because you live in our house and yes. in our home and in yes. our souls and in our hearts. Yes. Lord, thank you for this message today, and I think it's one that we can all carry to our family, friends, and loved ones. Uh -huh. yes. uh -huh. Let's revisit those times. Let's talk about the death. What does it mean to our children and to our family and our friends and our loved ones, Lord? We give you all the glory in this message, Lord. We can stand firm knowing that we have no fear of dying because you're with us, Lord. Lord, thank you for this precious prayer today. I know that my fellow brothers and sisters will be with me on this day, on Thursday. And, uh, it's just a privilege to come to you with a pure heart and a pure mind, Lord. And thank you for all of them that are suffering some kind of struggle in their life. And I just ask that you give them a peace and a touch of wisdom to know that they don't need to be worried. They don't need to be concerned because you're in control of all of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for tomorrow. We don't know where we're going to go tomorrow or what's going to happen, but whatever it is, we know you're going to be with us in all things. Yes. Amen. 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 As you go this week, go with courage. Mm -hmm. Do not fear. Mm -hmm. You have something in you and with you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Go in peace. Yes, Amen. Amen.